Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello everyone. In this video, we're going to discuss our week 4 hour tutorial for both NFTF and FTF questions covering 2.3 Hass's law. So the learning objective for non-face-to-face -face questions is to determine the standard enthalpy formations of a compound by using the thermochemical equations given. Acetylene C2H2 is a gas used in welding torches. It is produced by the actions of water on calcium carbide CaC2. So calculate the enthalpy of formations for acetylene in kilojoule per mole by using the thermochemical equations given below. So in here we have 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 given equations. What about targeted equations? So we need to write the thermochemical equations for the targeted equations on our own. How do we know this? By looking at the questions here, we want to find enthalpy of formations for acetylene. So we need to form one mole of acetylene from its most stable state of carbon and also hydrogen. Since the questions didn't specify what kind of method should be used, then you are free to choose whether you want to use algebraic or any cycle method. But for this kind of question, since we were given a massive number of informations, then we should go for algebraic method. For any chosen method, we still need to have the targeted equations. So from the questions just now, we don't have any targeted equations yet, means we need to create one. So from the questions, they ask to calculate the delta H of formations for the C2H2, means we need to form one mole of C2H2 from its most stable states of element. We know that our carbon must be in solid states and then our hydrogen gas, hydrogen is in gaseous states. So then we're going to have C2H2 in gaseous states. Followed by the given equations, so we need to rewrite the given equations. So again, you need to remember that algebraic method wants the one in targeted equations. So we need to keep an eye on the species present in targeted equations. We want to keep only these species. So let's check whether we have carbon or not. So we have one carbon in here, 3C, and then 1C. Followed by our hydrogen gas, we have it down here. And our C2H2 is right here. Does it mean that if we don't want to use any other species, we can simply ignore them? No. For this type of questions, you need to use all of them. They somehow gonna balance your equations so that you will get your targeted equations. So let's proceed with the modifications. So now we are going to focus on the circle equations. Then only we go for the one that is not circled. We're going to modify the given equations to suit the targeted equations. Let's start with carbon. So we have two thermochemical equations that have carbon on it. So if we look here, we have carbon on the same side. If we have species on the same side, means we're going to add them to become four carbon. But we want only two carbon. So how are we going to modify this? If we have species on different side, then we're going to cancel them out depending on the coefficients of that species. So in order to get two carbon, we're going to reverse the second thermochemical equations. Once we reverse the thermochemical equations, we will have a change in terms of its sign. So once we modify it to become like this, we will get our delta H of positive 220.0 kilojoule. So by having carbon on different side, we're going to cancel this and then this is left with 2. Alright, so we are done with 2 carbon. Next, let's look at hydrogen gas. So we have thermochemical equations of hydrogen gas with coefficients 2 and on the right hand side. On our targeted equations, we want only one mole of hydrogen gas and to be located on the left hand side. 
means we need to modify these thermochemical equations a bit by reversing the equations and also divided by 2. Once we do some modifications on these thermochemical equations, we're going to get these H2 gas and then we going we are going to have different sign on here together with a different value means half of the 572 so we have already secured our 2c and also h2 next we're going to look at the c2h2 so our thermochemical equations given here already have c2h2 on the right hand side so we don't need to modify these thermochemical equations we can just keep it as it is and we are left with another thermochemical equations which is cao react with h2o to give caoh2 if we look here we have caoh2 on the same side by having the same species on the same side we're going to have these species on our targeted equations but if we check our targeted equations we got none of this so what should we do by keeping c2h2 on the right hand side means we need to modify the latter thermochemical equations by reversing it so once we did the modifications we're going to get a new enthalpy of positive 65.3 so by reversing these equations we're going to cancel let's check or let's use different color pen we're going to cancel this because we don't we don't need it in our targeted equations although we have secured the species that needs to be on the targeted equations we still need to cancel everything else so let's check one by one so we have carbon monoxide on the right can be cancelled out with one mole of carbon monoxide on the left and then we have calcium oxide on the left and also calcium oxide on the right next we have the same species of h2o on the same side so we're going to add these two so we have two h2o can be cancelled out with these two h2o on different side and then this CAC2 on the left hand side can be cancelled out with the same species on the right hand side. So we are left with oxygen gas. So here we have half oxygen gas and then we can cancel them out with this half oxygen gas. So we only have the desired species that we want to include in our targeted equations. Hence, we can simply calculate them and find the enthalpy of formations for acetylene. We are going to add all these reactions together to finally get the enthalpy formations of acetylene of positive 335.6 kJ. The learning objectives for face-to-face -face questions week for our two is to determine the enthalpy of reactions by using standard enthalpy formations of a compound given. It means that we are going to use formula to calculate the enthalpy of reactions. Next, you need to know how to illustrate the dissolution process of ionic solid using energy cycle. And lastly, to perform calculations involving dissolution process. When plaster of Paris CaSO4 half H2O is mixed with water, it combines to produce gypsum CaSO4 to H2O. The reaction is exothermic, which explains why a plaster cast on a broken leg warms as it hardens. So from this statement, we already know that our enthalpy of reaction is going to have negative value. And then please note that we were, we were given standard enthalpy formations for each species that present in the targeted equations down here. So what does it mean? Whenever we have the standard enthalpy formations value, then we can simply use a formula of delta H reactions equal to delta H products minus delta H reactants.
when using formula, we need to relate it to the coefficients of the balance equation. So make sure your equations is already balanced. And then in this case, we're going to have products of CaSO4 to H2O with only one coefficient. And for the product, we, we are going to have one mole of CaSO4 half H2O and also 3 over 2 H2O in liquid states. So by substituting all the values in this formula, we're going to get our final entropy of reactions equal to negative 7.5 kJ. For question number 2, we're going to use this solution process to illustrate our energy cycle diagram. So given to the information regarding lattice energy of sodium chloride, which is negative 776 kJ per mole, please bear in mind that we have two types of lattice energy that we have learned. One is lattice formations, another one is lattice dissociations. The one that involved in this dissociation process is lattice dissociations where we require energy to break the solid into gases ions. So means that our lattice energy in this process always have positive value. If let's say the questions give you information about negative value, then we have to change it because we're going to create a cycle after this, then we need to make it tally with the directions of arrow. And then next information is about enthalpy change when one mole of solid sodium chloride dissolve in water to give positive 4 kJ per mole. So this definition belongs to enthalpy of solutions. And then if the enthalpy of hydrations of Na is negative 390 kJ per mole, so we were given enthalpy hydrations for Na, calculate the enthalpy of hydrations of Cl. So for these questions, we have separate value of enthalpy of hydrations, but some other questions can give you only one value for the enthalpy of hydrations. So it depends on the questions itself. So now, to answer this type of questions, you must draw the energy cycle diagram for this process. So we're going to start with enthalpy of solutions where one mole of NaCl is dissolved in water to give Na plus in aqueous and Cl minus in aqueous state. So we need to write our enthalpy of solutions equal to positive 4 kJ. Don't forget the unit. Next, from the solid state, we are going to break the lattice to become gaseous ions. So we're going to have lattice energy up here. Again, the questions give you negative sign. But if you want to use this cycle, then we need to change it to positive sign, indicating the arrow is going upwards. And then from gaseous state, we we are going to surround these gases ions with water. Then we're going to have our enthalpy of hydrations for both Na and also Cl. So given to you information regarding Na, then we want to find the enthalpy of hydrations for Cl. Again, we're going to apply the clockwise and anti-clockwise manners where we're going to equate these enthalpy solutions equal to lattice energy plus enthalpy of hydrations and A plus enthalpy hydrations of Cl. So we want to find this enthalpy hydrations of Cl, set this aside and substitute the value. Then you will get the final answer of negative 382 kJ per mole because we only got one mole of Cl being hydrated to become Cl minus aqueous. That's why we include this per mole. For question number three, we're going to apply the same process as in question number two, which is the solutions process. Given to you lattice energy for potassium fluoride is negative 8 to 1 kJ per mole and its enthalpy of hydrations is negative 819 kJ per mole. Note that this time around, we were given only one value of enthalpy of hydrations, means they already cater for both K plus and also F minus. Calculate the enthalpy of solutions for potassium fluoride. So we're going to start with the enthalpy of solutions where we have 
one mole of KF to be dissolved in water to form infinite dilute solutions. And then we're going to get K plus in aqueous and F minus in aqueous states. Both, in, both of them are one mole. And then we're going to proceed with the dissociations lattice where we are going to break the lattice to become gases ion. So since this lattice energy require energy, so we need to have positive signs. So we need to change this negative sign given to become positive signs. And then we're going to complete this cycle by having enthalpy of hydrations for K plus and F minus, both sharing the same value. So we're going to get a cycle. So we simply equate the delta H solutions equal to lattice energy plus enthalpy of hydrations. Substitute the value, then we're going to get enthalpy of solutions for Kf is 2 kJ per mole. That's all for week 4 our tutorial. Thank you.